guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. We are transitioning into fall. It's late August now, going into September. The bass are slowly beginning to make that move. They're gonna transition from their summer haunts to their fall haunts. And that is good news to all of us as fishermen because this is when that reaction bite on most fisheries really picks back up kicks into gear and you can start catching those aggressive fish again. So today I'm gonna to give you four different tips that are really gonna help you this fall, regardless of your fishing style. One of these is going to apply to help you load the boat, catch more fish. The first one is this little guy right here. It's called a front runner. I don't know if you've ever heard of one, seen one. We've done a video on it in the past, but you might've missed that. So here's the deal. If you're throwing walking baits in the fall, whether that's a Spook, a Rover, a Vixen, I don't care what it is. If you throw a walking bait, this is something that you need to add to your arsenal this fall. They're inexpensive, they're simple, and it can be a game changer. What is this little guy? What does it do? While I'm getting this out, have you ever been out in the fall, or any other time, and you get bit, this is really all it is. You get bit on a topwater, you're reeling it up to the boat, and there's a wolf pack of fish coming with it. There's schoolies all around, charging in on top of you, but your hooks, they're already in a fish, right? You've already got him hooked. Eight of his buddies are coming up alongside. Wouldn't it be nice if you had another hook? So here's the deal. This is called a front runner. What you do is you tie this on first. What I do is I take, say I'm throwing a Super Spook, I drop down to the Super Spook Junior. You wanna go a little bit smaller on your main bait, and then you add that little front runner out front. And they come in a couple different sizes. So if you're throwing a Super Spook, you can also throw the larger front runner. But what you do is you tie this on 12 to 18 inches, depending on the bait, sometimes even less. We'll say eight to 18 inches in front of your top water. When you go to walk it, and you'll have to experiment with that distance, you just take a piece of mono, and I usually tie Palomar. So what you do first is you tie a Palomar off the back of the front runner. If you do this in the proper order, you can tie all Palomars and stay strong. So a Palomar off the back of the front runner, then at the other end of that line, a Palomar to your top water, and then you take your main line coming from your rod and you go Palomar to the nose of the front runner and you can tie a Palomar on all three, you end up with a very strong system. If you do them out of order, you may have to tie some different knots. But what you do, eight to 18 inches out in front, you tie on that little tiny front runner. Well, what's gonna happen is when you start walking your spook, you don't walk it any different. You walk it just like normal, that walk the dog cadence they go opposite of each other, perfectly in the water. You'll almost never get bit on the front runner. The reason why is that bass are predators and they tend to target the predator. So they're going to eat the back bait. It looks like your spook is chasing the front runner. So they'll always eat the spook first. But once you've got a fish hooked up here, and this is why this is key in the fall when bass are schooling, once you're hooked up here, you now have another bait flapping around in front of that fish with a hook. And when those schoolies come up, you can get double hookups over and over and over. Now you need to pay attention to the laws in your state. One of the reasons I go to that Super Spook Junior is it has two hooks instead of three. In California, we're only allowed to fish with three hooks. So if I was throwing this with a Super Spook, the standard size, I would need to take the middle treble off. One of my favorite baits is, uh, we also throw the Vixen. We also throw the, why am I drawing a blank right now? The bait that I throw all the time. My other favorite walking bait, I don't know. I'll put links to all of it down in the video description. But all three of those baits, I have to take that center treble off so that I'm not fishing with too many hooks and violating the law. But if you're fishing a Super Spook Junior with that out in front, three hooks, you're all set. You can get double hookups all fall. Phenomenal trick. Next one, let's talk spinnerbaits. Are you a spinnerbait guy? 
different brands of spinner baits come with different size blades, right? Different weights, different blade sizes, different everything. Two spinner baits that I tend to lean to in the fall is gonna be the Bling or the smallest of the War Eagles because they have smaller blades out of the package than most of the other offerings. Like this Revenge, pretty big blades, right? In the fall, I like to throw small blades because the bait fish are being very aggressively hunted by the bass and as a whole are moving very quickly in that water. They're up shallow, they're fast, the bass are fast, everything's going quick. So in the spring, sometimes you throw those bigger thumping blades, really move some water. In the fall, I don't want that. I throw mostly willow blades and I throw smaller blades so that I can really burn that bait quickly. If you don't want to buy new spinner baits for the fall, what you do is you just buy blades. It's that simple. Size fours, size three, three and a half. You start buying different blade sizes. I mean, my total investment here is like a few dollars instead of buying all new spinner baits. Well, now I can take this Revenge, which is a bait that I love in the springtime. I can take this large blade off I replace it with my number four. Yep, that's my four. I replace it with a number four, and now this is a bait that I can fish much, much faster. When the fall is over, take that number four off, put my standard blade back on, and I'm back to a great springtime bait. Don't be afraid. Instead of spending a hundred bucks on new spinner baits, spend 10 or 15 or 20 bucks on different blade sizes and colors, and you are set through the fall, you can completely change the way that your your baits are fishing. You can speed them up, you can get more flash. It works. Invest in some blades. You're gonna change your spinnerbait fishing this fall. Number three, jerk baits. Add flash. Normally, we throw clear, clear, clear jerk baits. We love ghost minnow. We love those iridescent, those see-through colors. And that still holds true. I will still throw a lot of, you know, traditional ghost minnow in the fall. But if you get around schooling fish and you're not having trouble getting bit, but you're having trouble upsizing, it's time to go to flashier colors. The reason why is that in the fall, the bass are competing for the food. They are actively hunting. This isn't just a fish along the shoreline, you happen to come by with a bait so it eats it. You're targeting bass that are aggressively feeding on bait fish. They're feeding up before winter. So when you get on those fish, sometimes the difference between catching little ones and catching big ones is just standing out from the crowd. You want that flash so that your bait stands out from the thousands and thousands and thousands of other bait fish. American Shad is a great color. I honestly don't even know the name of this color, but I've been killing it on it. You can see the teeth marks all over that one. Flash is key. And then so is depth. Going to a bait like a Pointer 100 Deep Diver, a Stacy 90, a Jackal Dow's Vito 90, these are baits that get a little bit deeper because we've talked about this in videos before when they're feeding aggressively on bait fish, oftentimes the largest fish are below and on the edges. If you're fishing up high, you're catching the aggressive smaller fish. The larger fish, they don't want to work that hard. They'll hang below. Even when they're aggressive, they take the easy meals. So by going to that deeper diver, you may catch a few less fish, but you're going to be fishing below the school where the larger bass are staging. And then last but not least, let's talk about swim baits, swim bait heads. We throw a lot of Kitex in the fall, whether you throw a Kitex, a Bastrix, any other wide range of paddle tails and boot tail style swim baits, you can rig them um, on a jig head. I throw that Matt Allen swim bait head a lot. You could throw them on a weedless head, like an owner beast. Again, in, in fall, you want to stand out. You want your bait to look different than all the other bait fish in the water. So it's the one that the bass picks out of the group and it targets. So something you can do, let me dig a Kitek out. 
something that you guys can do. Now, you can buy underspins and you can buy in both versions. You can buy underspins on a jig head, you can buy underspins on a weedless hook. And we recommend that. And in the past, we've, we've shown you guys our favorite. In the video description, I'll give you our favorite underspins. Uh, it's the Owner Flashy Swimmer is the weedless version and the Blade Runner, uh, the Spin Tricks, I think is what it's called, but the Blade Runner head for the standard jig head. But if you don't wanna carry all those options, again, it's about simplifying and this is a trick anybody can do. If you don't wanna to have to worry about that, you just carry your standard options. And the reason why I like to do this specifically with an owner beast, is because the beast is a heavy wire hook. The flashy swimmer is a little bit lighter hook. There's also a deeper throat section. So it's got a really good hookup ratio. So sometimes I don't want that flashy swimmer, even if I'm carrying them in the boat. Sometimes I prefer the beast. But even with a head like this, my head, the Matt Allen swim bait head, if you take that head, you thread your swim bait on, so now we've got just a standard paddle tail rigged on a swim bait head. If you don't want to carry all the stuff, if you don't want to have to buy tons of different things, then you buy these little guys. Pro Point, is that who makes it? Pro Point? Pro Point Fishing Lures. Here's what it is. It's literally a screw-in blade. It works so well. You can take any bait, screw that guy in there, and you've got yourself an underspin. It works on this style head. It works on a beast. I screw it in right behind the shank of the hook works perfectly so instead of carrying bladed and non-bladed versions of everything if you have a favorite swim bait head just grab a pack of these they're like a couple bucks or something they're really inexpensive just throw it in the boat and when you realize hey i need to stand out from the crowd here i need to add some flash i need them to pick out of the thousands and thousands and thousands of bait fish that are schooling, I need the bass to see mine. I need a little bit of flash. Screw that guy in there and you're ready to go. You've instantly got that flash. You're producing fish. Really simplifies things. This isn't about spending a ton of money. This is about some quick things that you guys can do. I mean, you could buy all of the things that we just talked about for 20, 30 bucks and you're set for the fall. You add it into the arsenal that you already have, you modify the gear that you already have, and you're catching more fish, you're targeting bigger fish, you're getting down below the school, you're getting those better bites that other people are missing just by modifying the gear that you've already got. Hope that helps you guys. If it does, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends. We appreciate the support and we'll talk to you soon.